It's hard to contest the trust, and by far the most common way we try and do it is by using undue influence. Undue influence is simply where someone acts kind of almost like your caretaker, and you become dependent on that person. And then when they suggest things like changing a will, cutting out the rest of your relatives, and giving it all to me, and then they go say, how do I do that? And they take you to an attorney that they find, and then they receive all the money, that's basically undue influence. It would seem that this would not be a hard thing to prove, but it is. Because often the undue influencer is your children. So we often find that one child is more available, whether they're close by because they live there, or they're not working a hard job, or they might just not even have a job. And those people tend to be the undue influencers. But they are also children. So a lot of them say, hey, I'm just taking care of my mom or my dad. I'm taking the doctor. I'm helping them with their bills. Is that really undue influence? So then it looks like a contest between that undue influencer and other children who might be responsible, hardworking people, but they're in a different state. They don't stop by. They show up on Christmas and that's it. So undue influence is a very difficult way to contest a trust, but it's the most common way because it's the easiest way for the courts to actually uh, have a factual dispute that they can actually do something about. Mental capacity is a much harder way to prove these things. So when you're contesting a trust, we often focus on undue influence. And there's often a lot of witnesses. There's a lot of facts when you're contesting a trust through undue influence. It's not as medically record driven. Uh, we do sometimes find people have some dementia and things of that nature that make them more susceptible to undue influence. But when contesting a trust, undue influence is probably the most common way that we do it. Thank you.